Hi everybody, this is the Two Notes Opus. This is the funky new pedal from Two Notes that has their Cab M technology, the, the whole Two Notes Cab thing, and the all new preamps, low gain, high gain, bass, all in the same space as the original Cab M and Cab M Plus. Let's check it out. So this is something that I've been uh, working with Two Notes on for a while now. I made a bunch of six presets that are going to be somewhere on this device using the cabinets that are on board. The Cab M was a great solution for if you had preamp pedals and wanted to run an ampless board and it didn't have a preamp in built. However, this one does. The preamp eventually that they put into the uh, the Cab M as a software update was uh, very clean, uh, very clean indeed, and didn't satisfy a lot of the uh, people who wanted an all-in-one box. Uh, now the Opus is here and it can do exactly that. I'm using a preset I made called Milton Cleans where I'm using a uh, no cabinet at all, just the preamp and a lot of reverb, and that's where we got the intro from with that. That kind of sound. And so that was heavily inspired by Ackle from Tesseract and Brown from Monuments with their kind of Milton clean sound. And the trick there is turn off the cabinet entirely. So that's that's a little bit of a fairly well-known secret, but I'm still using the preamp, which is the foundry, which is very kind of American clean sounding through a push pull 6L6 power amp. And so yeah, then the, the cab is off and then there's just the enhancer and loads of reverb. But what else can it do? It can do, if I change the preset, it can do this, and I'm gonna add a little bit of a gate in here. So very tight, very aggressive with the nifty 50, which sounds like 5150. Like I said, I've been working with two notes, so I'll just make sure we've got full disclosure right here. The, this is a sponsored video brought to you in collaboration with Two Notes. They are helping me out uh, financially to do this video. This is not a review. This is me showing you what this pedal can do and showing you what I did with those guys to make the presets that I made. I tend to purposefully focus on bass because I'm a bass player first, so we'll get there very shortly. But most of this video is me showing you what this thing can do. And on the screen here, you'll be able to see the uh, Torpedo Remote software. So by USB, I'm controlling all of this. I don't have to, I can control all of this on the pedal, it's just a little more fiddly to do, but it's very much possible if you're in the field and you decide in the middle of a show, say that one of your presets has a bit too much mids, uh, in the interval you might be able to go and dig in and find, if I go kind of click, click, click and go to EQ, and then it's on custom mode, find the frequencies, turn it up. It's quite a technical pedal for technical people, but that suits me down to the ground. Now, something that it comes with is one of these. What's one of that, Adam? This is a MIDI cable. So it's got a three and a half mil jack on one end and MIDI on the other. So if I plug that into the Opus, I can use any MIDI pedal switcher to change the preamp, change the cabinet, change the preset, change any of the parameters on the Opus. So what I was planning to do is I have a Matthews Effects Futurist, which is the tiny little four button uh, controller, which has a three and a half mil jack MIDI out to go straight from that into the Opus so I can switch presets during the show. The Opus doesn't have any uh, pedals buttons on it, uh, but I'm sure that was a design decision based on the kind of the cab M and that kind of thing. But the external MIDI means that if I'm running a show with a band where everything is MIDI controlled and that can change automatically by way of being MIDI controlled like anything else, 
And like I say, the Matthews Effect Futurist or the old Behringer FCB 1010 or Voodoo Labs Ground Control or whatever it is that you'd like to use to change MIDI can do that. And a lot of pedals that I know now um, can change MIDI presets from a different pedal. So if you've got a MIDI wired up pedal board, this could be really clever to put near the end of your board. It has an XLR out, so you could use this as the final piece of the puzzle on your pedal board. The sounds that I'm making today are using nothing but the Opus pedal. So that way I can show you what it does and not what it plus other pedals does. Uh, there are going to be people I'm sure who make reviews of this on day one uh, who use pedals they're probably quite heavy pedal users. I'm generally not. When I go out on tour, I tend to play bass. Um, I tend to have two or three sounds, kind of a low gain and a high gain. And I quite often run a single compressor in front and maybe a chorus for one song, maybe depending on the set. So I'm not much of a pedals guy for what I do. Uh, for the studio, that's a whole different thing. But in the studio, I've got all the big two notes gear and all the big you know, other stuff. I've been one of the two notes capture masters for quite a long time now. Uh, but yeah, it can do a lot. And that's one of my presets, Red Ed Redemption, which is very, well, 5150, dialed in very much like I think that someone like Eddie Van Halen might have used in the early 90s with that kind of, kind of unlawful carnal knowledge style tone. If you were to put, I said I, I don't use pedals, but if you were to use um, some sort of big flanger or phaser or something on this, you could do that kind of... That kind of thing. And I've run this entirely without reverb because for a shred sound, that's what I would want. But if I brought in, say, the Studio A... Get more of that kind of Van Halen 1 kind of tone. I mean, that's higher gain than Van Halen 1. But that kind of thing is all, again, coming from the Opus. I'm not using a boost pedal in front. I'm not using anything afterwards. Um, if I was to take this on tour, I might have uh, a boost pedal, a tube screamery type thing. Uh, I might have a delay pedal afterwards. One, one of my favorites is the Wampler Metaverse. And then just have, because also the Wampler Metaverse is MIDI controllable. So I could have just a, a boost pedal and then the Matthews Effects Futurist to change the patches on everything. And that could run on one of those single kind of nano boards. That's the other thing. This runs on negative 12 volts, uh, runs about 200 milliamps, which is almost exactly the same power consumption as the Cab M. So if you had a Cab M before, you can run this. I've run this at nine volts as well. So if you've only got a power supply that'll run nine volts, you shouldn't, it's not recommended, but you can. So yeah, if you can bump that up to 12 volts, it's negative center, which means it's pretty much guitar pedal ready. Uh, so it doesn't need uh, an awkward second power supply, which is always useful. And yeah, I've got the USB connected, but what I would probably do before a show is connect that, make sure my presets are right, then unplug that and not have that on the board. I also have my input level set on instrument mode because I am going straight in. Which means that the impedance and everything is set correctly for a guitar with passive pickups. If you're using pedals in front with buffers, you can get away with using line mode, but instrument mode is definitely recommended for this pedal in this situation. There is also line and amp mode, because if you want, you can turn the preamp entirely off in this and use it exactly like you would have with the Cab M pedal. So let's say you had a secondary preamp on your board. I don't know, Victory V4 Kraken or something, just pulling something out of the top of my head. What you could do is have a preset on the Opus that turns off the preamp and has the correct kind of power amp emulation and cab emulation to match your, uh, your second preamp, as it were. And then if that's only great for one or two particular sounds, you could turn those off and switch the Opus back to using its own preamp. And because it's got the uh, loop which can handle the, that can handle a guitar head 
as long as there is a load connected. Let's be careful. With the Opus, much like the Cab M, is not a load box. It's not an attenuator. Um, if you have a speaker and you have an amp head, you can run cables that go through the Opus and kind of, it's almost like it's listening to the signal, but it can't bear the brunt of the force of that speaker output. But that means that if you didn't currently own a Cab M, and you wanted the two notes uh, kind of stuff without having to buy the separate load, you can do that. Alternatively, if you have something like the older Captor 8 or Captor 16 or 4 from two notes, where's mine? It's up there. So I could run a 100 watt amp into this load box and then use the line output into the Opus. That's a very different situation to using the inbuilt preamp and power amp on the Opus, so I would have a preset that had both of those disabled. But that's flexibility for you. You could use a big box amp and a load box and the Opus at home in the studio situation. Then you could take the Opus, change the preset to be one that has a preamp and a power amp, stick that on your pedal board, take that away to a show where you have to fly. It's really useful in terms of its versatility. I will get onto bass, but before I do, there's another cool trick that has been added because the uh, the Opus has an IR loader. Now, the IR loader has traditionally been used to replicate a guitar speaker with a mic on it and all that kind of stuff as authentically as possible in a particularly fixed position. Uh, two Notes have always liked using their uh, Dyn IRs, uh, and they really do, I think, get the best out of the Cab M and the Opus. But if you really wanted to use uh, your own impulse response, you could using the IR loader. But there is an extra trick now. This, as I'm sure you're aware, is an acoustic guitar, but it's an electroacoustic guitar. And if I turn off the IR loader and all the other stuff that is going on, you will hear that this sounds like a typical piezoelectric acoustic. It sounds quacky and horrible. Because that's how electroacoustics tend to sound. But if I turn on the IRs, I mean, the strings on this uh, acoustic are quite dead, but let's add a little bit of reverb on that. And that's one of the IRs that comes included. That's the Nashville 200. There are quite a few on this torpedo. And so I've got Taka, I've got Over. Let's go with, I don't know, Marty 17E. How do I turn off one of these two? Uh, I'm just gonna mute the second one, there we go. That is all coming directly through the Opus. Uh, I made sure I turned off the microphone while that was playing each time. So if I turn that to a different sound, uh, Hummingbird, let's try that. That sounds way better than, if I turn that off again, it sounds way better than this. It takes away that quacky pizzo thing, so that's another very clever trick up the Opus's sleeve. Uh, for me, that makes this incredibly versatile because I could have that set as another preset. So in the middle of a show, if I've got an acoustic song to do, I could do this. I could even do this with an electric full solid body guitar with a pizzo electric output. So if my guitar's got a pizzo mode, change to pizzo mode. It's pizzo, not piezo, thank you very much. Comments below. <laughs> 
and uh, you could then have the same guitar sound like this. And then go straight into the next section with a preset on a MIDI controller and then switch on the guitar to a magnetic pickup at the same time and go straight back into heavy rock and roll. So there's so much that you can do, it's absolutely bananas. On to bass. So here's what it sounds like completely dry because I've got the tuner on. And here's how it sounds on my fat rock bass. Now this bass does seem a little brighter and a little more high gain than the bass that I dialed this tone in with. So I've just brought down the gain, the middle and the treble on the preamp just a little bit. And let's see what that's... Now that might be a little bitey for a lot of people, so I can take the brilliance down in the enhancer. Partly some of that's my playing too, if I play less aggressively, I get this. Switch entirely to the neck pickup and have that kind of P style sound. That to me is a good rock bass sound. It might sound out of context like there's a lot of high end going on there, but if I start playing with a band, the band are very quickly going to kind of swallow up that high end and all they're really gonna care about is the low, which I could have made more boomy, but I didn't want to absolutely flood my presets with low end. If I want more gain, let's go to the motor bass preset because this is very lemmy. This is very, uh, give it everything you've got and hope for the best. This is, uh, let's just equalize out everything on the bass. That's really high gain. Now, the previous preset, I'll just talk about this. This had the Peggy preamp, which is very ampeg ish, uh, going into a 6L6 power stage. Uh, I tried the KT88, but it wasn't quite resonating right. There isn't, unfortunately, a, a 6550 uh, style power section. But my opinion on the power amps is generally speaking, the valves themselves don't make a huge amount of difference. But. Um, generally, when people design a valve power amp, they have to design the circuit around a specific valve with a specific tone in mind. So you do end up, generally speaking, with an amp designed for EL34s and an amp designed for 6L6s and an amp designed for KT88s sounding quite different, not just because of the valves themselves, but because the entire circuit's components and values and everything that's in that kind of organic thing is set up very differently. So there are differences, but it's not necessarily in what's in the glass, it's everything all together. So when we change the single-ended or push-pull, all that kind of stuff here, that's not just changing out the model valves, that's changing out the entire power amp circuit. So yeah, that is very typical of a high headroom American kind of bass sound, the, uh, the rock bass there. Whereas the motor bass is very, with the Albion, which is supposed to be a guitar head, it's very kind of British and Marshall-y, uh, going through an EL34 push-pull uh, valve stage, which again is very Marshall-y, 
which is what Lemmy in Motorhead was using. And then I've just pushed the gain, pushed a lot of things, which it's a lot higher gain than most bass players would use. But if you want that Motorhead sound, this is how you get it. <laughs> There's also smooth bass, where I really went for something very different, uh, much more uh, kind of straight ahead. I'm generally going to roll the high end off the bass here, if it was passive I'd roll the tone down, but now I can get... So we get that much smoother, big, fat bass tone. I personally would have expected the aluminium speakers to be really bright, and they can be, uh, but I had a, a, an aluminium speaker 4x10 bass cabinet for years. I think I bought it when I was 17. And it had a certain character to it, but it meant that the kind of, the, the kind of, 1K, 2K, 3K region that paper cone bass speakers tend to bark in. It was very even in that range. That kind of resonance was much higher, which meant that if I dulled down the top end on the bass, I could get quite a round sound because that kind of mid range was much smoother than previously. The other thing that I kept in mind is that my presets for the Opus were made specifically with the cabinets that come with the Opus because it comes with a pack of, I think, 30 cabs and there are a couple more that it comes with with a kind of a, a nice uh, extra complimentary thing there. There's at least one of my Capture Master cabinets on the torpedo. Let's have a look what's in here specifically. Cabinet manager, what's on here? Purple Haze, that's one of mine. That's my old oversized uh, Tallbox Marshall 412. I think that's the only one of mine in that pack that made the cut, but that's absolutely fine because that's 32 cabinets loaded on there out of, I think at last count there was something like 600 on the store. There's, there's loads from Victory and Laney and Ashdown, all of which I made, so, you know, shameless plug. And uh, all the hot pole ones, which I made obviously in here, there were loads of Zilla cabs and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, have a look if you get an Opus or a Cab M or a Captor X through the two note store because there's loads of options if nothing that's preloaded really tickles your fancy. I mean, you should find something that suits you between 32 cabinets, I, I did. Uh, the classic kind of eight by 10 Ampeg style fridge wasn't on there, but the 9 by 10 was and the 9 by 10 they're quite rare but they exist and it's bonkers and it sounds absolutely huge and I used that for my rock bass preset which is probably going to be my go-to if I ever do like covers gigs and wedding shows and that kind of stuff because that's something I do sometimes outside of YouTube and so yeah that is where I'm going to leave it I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation Thanks to Two Notes for the uh, sponsorship of the video, and uh, thank you to everybody at home for supporting me on the channel. Thanks everybody for watching, thanks to the patrons on Patreon, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.